The U.S. Space Force is expected to launch a not-so-secret secret spacecraft tonight. The military uses the autonomous X-37B orbital test vehicle to try out technology and conduct experiments. And Space Force keeps much of its activities under wraps. They don't even announce its return to Earth until after the fact. Now it's set for its next mission, which could last years. Let's bring in former NASA astronaut and International Space Station Commander Leroy Chow for more. Commander Chow, thanks for coming on. So what more can you tell us about the X-37B spacecraft? Well, the X-37B has been uh, very impressive in that it's flown many missions. It, it's autonomous, so it's, uh, that is, there's no crew aboard, and it has stayed in space as long as around two and a half years. And so uh, the, the military, of course, has been very secretive about its purpose, its mission. Uh, it's been observed by uh, amateur, you know, astronomers or observers changing orbits and, you know, uh, doing different things. But uh, this mission in particular, the Space Force did announce a couple of objectives. It's going to, the X-37B is going to test a laser-based uh, communication system. And it's also going to test a uh, what they are calling a quantum inertial navigation system. Both of those would enable a military or other system to be hardened against any interference by, you know, a bad actor. That is, if you have a laser communication system where you can point the laser exactly where you want it, want it to go, uh, then it's less susceptible to interference, broad interference. Similarly, the inertial navigation system would allow the vehicle to very precisely know where it is without using things like GPS, which can also be jammed. And so testing some technologies that are going to be very useful, especially for military systems. And we don't know what else it's going to be doing up there or even how long its mission is going to last. Space Force isn't disclosing the length of this upcoming mission or the exact time of the launch. Why all the secrecy? Well, it's out of necessity. You know, we don't necessarily want uh, anyone else to know what we are up to, uh, you know, so it's not surprising. You know, we don't also don't divulge capabilities of surveillance satellites and communication satellites and things like that. Uh, but this is a little bit more high profile because it does go up and it does come down like a like a mini space shuttle of sorts. And it's been a very successful program. It's been uh, going on now for a number of years. Now, this launch comes just over a week after President Trump signed an executive order aimed at boosting competition in the commercial space industry. What impact do you think that'll have? I think that's a tremendous piece of uh, uh, an, an executive order that he signed because it's uh, it's going to help streamline and stimulate commercial activities in space. He has ordered the uh, uh, Secretary of Transportation to work with the NASA Administrator, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Commerce, and other other officials to help uh, you know kind of streamline the rules not only on launching payloads into space, but on bringing things back down to Earth, also building spaceports, newer spaceports, streamlining that process. And uh, more, most importantly, perhaps, is uh, having them come up with new regulations or to revamp regulations, allowing novel, uh, innovative new space companies to, you know, be, you know, take the handcuffs off or cut the red tape and let them go and try new things. And so uh, I think this is going to be a very exciting uh, developments to open up, you know, the barriers that were there uh, for a lot of these commercial space activities. Critics say the order could weaken NASA's authority and shift priorities toward profitability rather than science and innovation. Some environmental activists also say it'll put people and wildlife at risk. What's your response to that? No, I don't think so, because NASA, of course, is government funded. NASA is not in the business of of making money. I'm not even sure they would be allowed to, you know, or I know they wouldn't be able to do that as a federal agency. And so really, it's complementary. You have uh, the commercial companies providing services not only to NASA, as they're doing today, uh, but also they are thriving and they're going to compete with each other. And that is always a good thing. You look at what's happened to launch costs after uh, SpaceX basically drove the monopoly that United Launch Alliance held and have dramatically decreased the, the cost of launching payloads into space. And so I think the two are complementary and they go together. As far as the environmental side, uh, we still have Environmental Protection Agency and other uh, interested parties that are going to be that are part of named as part of this executive order to work with the Secretary of Transportation, uh, SecDef, and NASA administrators. So I see this all as a positive. I don't I don't think there's any any downside to any of this. All right, former NASA astronaut, ISS Commander Leroy Chow, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.